Hi, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the webcast. So with SQL Century, I'm your host for today's webcast. Won't be doing all the talking, but uh, I'll get us started off here. My name's Brent Ozar. Uh, time for some introductions. I'm a Microsoft Certified Master. There's about a dozen of us in the United States who don't work for Microsoft. Uh, it's a big, complicated test that means that when I tell you to do something, uh, you better do it. I'm glad that you came to the webcast because I told you to come in here. You're going to see some tools that will make your life a lot easier. Uh, make you look like a master without having to go through all the ridiculous training. I'm a Microsoft Most Value Professional. I've got over 10 years of SQL Server experience. I live, eat, and breathe performance tuning. And I also like to have a whole lot of fun, which is why I started SQL Cruise with my business partner, Tim Ford. Tim, uh, tell the audience a little about yourself. Uh, well, uh my name is Tim Ford. I have uh, been a senior database administrator and uh, subject matter expert, lots of words there, um, with Spectrum Health for about a dozen years now. And uh, also have joined up with uh, Brent and uh, two other partners of ours, uh, Jeremiah Peshka and Kendra Little in a uh, consulting firm that's uh, known as Brent Ozar PLF. I uh, also have been running SQL Cruise from the beginning along with Mr. Ozar. And also in there from the beginning has been uh, SQL Sentry as, a, as our first uh, sponsor. And they're joining us now for the third time. But uh, for the first time, we're actually going to have one of the SQL Sentries join us. Um, that is going to be the gentleman you're going to hear shortly, um, Aaron Bertrand. Uh, Aaron, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. I'm an MVP. I'm a senior consultant at SQL Century, and uh, I've been using SQL Server for a long time. Yes, a very long time, actually. Uh, I, I was a little surprised when I was looking at a bio of you recently. How long have you been an MVP now for, for uh, SQL Server? I've been an MVP since 97, but I wasn't originally awarded in uh, SQL Server. I was originally awarded in Active Server Pages. Oh, interesting. I, I, Classic VB script. woo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be discussing and presenting on um, ASP or VB script uh, on the cruise. Can you tell me a little bit? Well, I know. Can you tell our audience a little bit about what you're going to be presenting on? Uh, on the cruise, I'll be talking about uh, new engine and tools features in uh, SQL Server Denali, so the next version of uh, SQL Server. Fantastic, fantastic. Hey, um, besides uh, talking to a whole bunch of us uh, SQL geeks on the, on the ship, well, what else are you looking forward to while, while we're out there? I uh, finally booked my excursions, so we're going on a, a train ride in Skagway, and uh, I can't wait to go snorkeling in Ketchikan. Ah, yes, there's, uh, I think we're up to probably about five or six of us now that are going to, to brave the cold waters and do that. Yeah, I think that's going to be fun. I actually just got my uh, Dica pack today for my camera so I can take it underwater. Oh, great, Ooh. fantastic. I can leave mine on the shore then where <laughs> I want to worry about trying to use a Ziploc bag and duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what I want to do is, is turn this over to, to Aaron because more important than our snorkeling trip in, in uh, Ketchikan, I think is the subject of this great uh, free community tool that uh, SQL Sentry's put out there for, for everybody. Um, I can't stress the word free enough and, and uh, great enough. Um, so without any further interruptions on my part, uh, Aaron, you want to take it away? Uh, sure. So Brent, uh, I know that you're giving some presentations on SQL Cruise as well. Uh, and yeah. I think that we're going to cover a little subset of one of your presentations here. Do you want to uh, talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to switch over to that slide. Uh, I'm doing two things on this uh, SQL Cruise this time around. One of them is uh, storage, the, the SAN administrator lie detector toolkit. Uh, we'll be talking for a couple of hours about how to find out whether or not the SAN really is the problem. And the other one that we're going to cover is I'm going to spend two hours talking about defensive indexing. Now, in a perfect world, your developers get you involved long before you go build a database schema. And your end users have perfect examples of the queries that they're going to use for reports. Unfortunately, that never happens in real life. And what really happens in real life is that you're thrown under the gun and you have to go look at the SQL Server, find the most expensive query plans, 
find out whether uh, indexing really is the right option. So often, I was just at a client yesterday where we were looking at their most heavily loaded table, uh, transactional table with every single financial transaction this company had, and they had 57 indexes on it. Five, seven. That is not a typo. Uh, and so talking to them, you know, you have to keep your poker face and say, well, how did it get this way? You know, tell me about why, how we chose those 57 indexes. And honest to goodness, the client said straight out, well, all of our developers are sysadmins, and whenever they have a query that's running slow, they go click this little database tuning advisor wizard, and they implement whatever indexes come out of that. <laughs> well, that, that does make your query go faster, but of course it piles up and causes all kinds of problems whenever we want to do inserts, updates, and deletes. So I talk about defensive indexing because really that's the last thing that I want to do is just go slap an index on something. Every time I add an index, it causes my backups to take longer, causes my DBCC jobs to take longer, any kind of maintenance operations are going to take a longer time, and then of course my inserts, updates, and deletes, or as I call them, my DUI operations. Those are all going to take longer, especially when we get to the point of 57 indexes. So when we're looking at query execution plans on the boat on SQL Cruise next week, I'm going to talk to everybody about how to find which queries are so expensive, and whether you're using a procedure cache, free tools like SP Who is Active, or really good tools like SQL Sentry Performance Advisor that are constantly monitoring your servers without having to run a trace. You know, in a perfect world, we would all run traces 24-7 if we could do it without an impact to our server, but you want a tool that's going to be able to find that out without having to run a trace 24-7 around the clock. So when we find those expensive queries, then we want to analyze those execution plans, but we want to look at them in terms of our current bottleneck. I may not care if a query is doing ugly CPU things, so things like uh, date conversions, character conversions, uh, wild UDFs. If CPU isn't my bottleneck, and maybe if that's not the most expensive thing in the query, maybe I need to look at logical reads. Um, if I'm having extreme storage problems, I just want to isolate cost in terms of reads, and, or vice versa, or CPU. And I want to go ahead and look at those plans in terms of big differences between prediction, predicted and actual row counts, large sorts and joins between different indexes and tables, multiple repeated operations on the same table. So just because you see something only happening once in the execution plan doesn't mean SQL Server is only doing it once. If you hover your mouse over that node in the execution plan, you may see that it's doing 10 or 20 or 30,000 times of that operation. And then implicit conversions, which is something else that's really hard to catch with the execution plans. I want to go through and I want to analyze every one of these plans but this is really difficult when we're dealing with those monster execution plans, things with hundreds, 200, or more nodes in the plan. On the first uh, SQL Cruise, we ran a uh, contest called this Hairy Execution Plan Contest. Because on cruise ships, they always have these hairy chest contests where people, a bunch of old fat guys go out there and they take their shirts off and the guys with the most hair win a prize. Believe me, you don't want to be around the pool when that happens. Um, especially because I don't want you taking pictures of me. No, I will never enter that contest, but we did have a hairy execution plan contest, and we'll be doing it again this year thanks to SQL Sentry. We're going to invite all the cruisers to bring in their ugliest plans, and we'll do it online as well. End users are going to be able to open up, uh, uh, upload their own hairiest execution plans. We're going to give away a winner, uh, prizes to the winners, just like today we're running contests over on SQLCruise.com where we're giving away three books. So anyway, you've got this ugly execution plan. You have no idea how to slice and dice it. And then on the boat, uh, there's actually several of us who are going to be talking about how to dive in deeper in execution plans. And today, this is where Aaron comes in. And I'm going to pass it over to Aaron to show how to do some of these analysis. Great. Thanks, Brent. So first, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the problems we have with the tools we use today, Management Studio. Uh, there are several limitations in how we uh, analyze plans and how it displays plans. It doesn't have uh, the most optimal output. Uh, everything is all in one color, so expensive nodes can be hard to find. And this is even tougher if you have multiple statements and multiple plans. Uh, we have many performance issues that are hidden or buried in properties, 
uh, the properties panel or in the only shown in the plan XML. Uh, we have the case where costs are only shown uh, by a combined metric of I.O. and CPU. So if you're focusing on I.O. like Brent was describing earlier, uh, there's no way to pick out just the expensive nodes in terms of I.O. and uh, conversely the expensive nodes in terms of CPU. Uh, we also see that uh, the arrows between uh, operators, uh, they only show row counts and a lot of people don't even know that the thickness of the arrow uh, reflects the number of rows being transferred. But in some cases you might have a million rows that are going across and it's only uh, a megabyte worth of data and in another case you have uh, four rows that are going across and because it's an XML column uh, you know it could be eight gigs. Uh, there's also a lot of wasted space and uh, I'm sure a lot of us have seen the cases where the percentages in Management Studio are way off. So I've got some demos here and I'm, I'm just going to go through uh, some of these cases and show how uh, Plan Explorer, which is a tool that we developed last year and uh, give out free to the community, uh, can make a lot of these limitations go away. So oh, wow. first... Oh, go well, ahead, while Aaron switches to it, I want to jump in and say one point too. That so they're giving this tool away just like SQL Sentry has also been giving away so much to the community already. They don't toot their own horn, but I'm going to jump in and toot it for them here. SQL Sentry has sponsored us from the very first SQL Cruise when it was a total risk and we had no idea how popular it was going to be. They stepped right in and gave away four different cruises to community members. Ever since, they've been a top-tier sponsor for us. They sponsor local user groups, regional events, the past summits, SQL bits, you name it. If it benefits the community, they are always, it seems like, the first ones on board. So not only are they giving away all this free education at user group meetings and webcasts like this one here, now they're also giving away software, too. So they're giving away software that makes your job easier. So now I'll hand it back over to Aaron now that I'm done tooting your horn. <laughs> Thanks, Brent. Um, so we have a plan here. Relatively simple plan, a lot of nodes, but it's uh, you know not among the more complex plans you've probably seen. Uh, but you can see some of the things that I'm t talking about already. Where is the expensive node? Um, you know, to see this really, even for a plan this small, because of the layout, I have to zoom in, pan around, uh, scroll around, and try to find that. And you can also see cases like this where, because there's a single node here, nothing can ever be shown to the left of that node. And same with uh, when there's a node here, nothing can be shown above. So it, it just makes these plans, and as they get more complex, it, the uh, layout just becomes exponential where you're, you have to pan out really far to see uh, the whole plan. We also see things like uh, the object name in these nodes. If I'm trying to look for a name and it happens to be a little bit long, all of the names are truncated. Uh, and there, there isn't a way to override that in the visual plan. The costs are at the bottom, so if I'm trying to uh, follow a, a path along here, I see all those costs at the bottom. It's hard to find, especially when, uh, in some cases, uh, the operators and the object names and the operation names uh, wrap, and they end up being more uh, displayed on more lines. So it, it pushes those costs down. So it's really hard to uh, just you visually scan across in a horizontal line and see the costs. Uh, the tooltip here for the query shows a, an absolutely, and I, I don't think I can even get it to show up, shows a ridiculous, uh, like who could read that? If you can try to figure out what that query is in the two seconds that the tooltip uh, 